Hi there. Now for this question, we're asked to find the coordinates of the points on the curve y equals a third x cubed plus 9 over x, at which the tangent is parallel to the line y equals 8x plus 3. And this is for 10 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done this already, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Well, the answer is that those coordinates are at 3, 12 and at minus 3, minus 12. So if you got that, that's brilliant. If not, and you'd like to see how this is done, I'll take you through the answer. OK, well, first of all, what we'll need to do is just put down the equation of the curve first of all. We've got y equals one third then x cubed plus 9 divided by x. Now for a question like this what I'd be thinking of is drawing a sketch of the graph and I'm not too sure really what the graph looks like. Um, so I'm just going to do say a squiggle. It doesn't look anything like this I know but this is just so I can get an idea of what to do. So let's just suppose that's part of this curve. And we've got the line y equals 8x plus 3, which let's say might be a line looking something like that, for instance. There we go. y equals 8x plus 3. And what we're looking for is a point on this curve where the tangent is parallel to this line. Well, for this sketch, it's going to be, say, maybe that point there. Because if I draw a tangent through that, point there, okay, it'll be parallel to the line y equals 8x plus 3. So to get this point, the method I'm going to do is, first of all, find out what the gradient is at any point on the curve. And I can do that by differentiating our equation with respect to x, finding dy dx in other words. Then I know that if the gradient at this point has got to be exactly the same as the gradient of this line. Well, the gradient of the line is 8 from y equals mx plus c. And then I can equate dy by dx, the gradient then, with 8. Solve the equation for x. Once I've got x, that will give me the x-coordinate here. And then I can just substitute it into here and get the corresponding y-coordinate. OK, so that's the method. You might even want to pause the video at this stage just to uh, continue on. Anyway, so we're going to differentiate this. And before I can differentiate it, I need to modify the last term. 9 divided by x is the same as 9 times 1 over x. And 1 over x is x to the power minus 1. So we end up with 9x to the power minus 1. And so to differentiate this, to get the gradient at any point on the curve, differentiating with respect to x gives us 3 times a third, which is 1. Reduce the power on the x by 1, so you're just left with x squared. For this term, minus 1 times 9 gives us minus 9. Reduce the power on x, so that's x to the power minus 2. I'm going to write this in a simplified version. This is minus 9 then multiplied by 1 over x squared. 9 times 1 over x squared gives us 9 over x squared. So we now know that at this point here, the gradient has got to match the gradient of the line, which is 8. So we say that when dy by dx equals 8. What we've therefore got okay, is that x squared minus 9 divided by x squared, well that must equal 8. And it's just a question now of solving this equation. And to do this what I'd want to do is multiply throughout by x squared. So x squared times x squared here is going to be x to the power 4. x squared times this term just leaves us with minus 9. And then it equals 8 times x squared, 8x squared then. And what I've got here 
is a quartic equation. And to solve this, I would need to bring everything to one side. So we'll write it as x to the 4. I'm going to take 8x squared from both sides. 8x squared there. And then we've got minus the 9. And that equals 0. Now I say this is a quartic equation because it's got to the power 4. But I can change this to x squared, all squared, and then minus 8x squared minus 9 equals 0. And now think of it as a quadratic equation in x squared. Okay. Some of you might like to just let u, for instance, equal x squared. So you'd have u squared minus 8u minus 9 equals 0. And go on to find out what u is. And when you've got that, just equate it back to x squared. I'm going to go straight in, though, and factorize this. Okay. So treating it then as a quadratic in x squared, I'm going to have x squared here and x squared here. Those two would multiply together to give me x to the 4. I need two numbers that multiply together to give them minus 9. And I can see that if I choose minus 9 and plus 1 here, you can see I get minus 9. But then when I check out my x squared term, I'm going to get 1x squared minus 9x squared. That's going to give me the minus 8x squared. And from this, we know that each of these factors would equal 0. So therefore, x squared minus 9 could equal 0. Or the other factor, x squared plus 1, could equal 0. Working with this one here, if I add 9 to both sides, we've got x squared equals 9. And then I can square root both sides, and therefore x would be equal to plus or minus 3. When it comes to this equation here, x squared plus 1 equals 0, if I were to take 1 from both sides, okay, we'll put all there, I'd get x squared equals minus 1. But if you square anything, you'll never get a negative number. You'll always have a positive value. You can't square root a negative number. So for this, there's no solution. So that just leaves us then with x equaling plus or minus 3. So now we've got that x equals plus or minus 3. We just need to find the corresponding y values. So we can say that when x equals 3, if we substitute this up into this equation here, let's just call that equation 1. And we can say sub in 1 then we find that, I think we'll run out of room here, we better just come down here, that if we substitute it in, we find that y equals one third multiplied by x cubed, so x was the 3, 3 cubed, plus 9 divided by 3. And if you work this out, this comes to 12. And if we look at when x equals minus 3, again substituting this in for y, y equals 1 third of minus 3 all cubed plus 9 divided by minus 3. And if you work this one out, you end up with minus 12. So therefore, what we've got are the points, okay, have to be the coordinates then when x is 3. We end up with y being 12. And when x is minus 3, we see that y is minus 12. So there's our two points. Now I know that this graph wasn't this one here. This was just to get me to appreciate what to do, the method. But I'll show you what the real graph looks like. You'll notice it's got an asymptote on the y-axis. That's because when you divide by 0, you get an undefined value. So it tends to the y-axis here. Anyway, the points that we've got are 3, 12. So if you were to go across 3 units, 1, 2, 3, then this point here is about 12. Okay, So we've got one point there. And we've also got a point at minus 3 minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 12. That's that point there. 
that if we drew the tangents on, okay, they would in fact look something, say, like that one, and one here, that would look something like that. If you were to draw the graph of y equals 8x plus 3, then the graph of y equals 8x plus 3 is going to go through the 3 here. This marker here is 10, so it's very difficult to really draw it on, but uh, 8x plus 3 is going to look, say, something like that line going through there. Okay, so I hope it's given you some idea. Anyway, what's going on?